All right, I'll call this meeting to order. Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> Just a reminder that uh, we do have Councillor Gray joining us uh, via Zoom tonight, and uh, we just need to speak up if, uh, if we're speaking uh, in the room so that Councillor Gray can hear us as well. Councillor Gray, you can hear us all right? Yeah, they can hear some. Okay. There's some background noise. I'm not sure what that is. Okay. There's a car going by. Yeah. Resolve that the agenda for the April 2nd regular meeting of council be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor uh, Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Resolve that the minutes of the March 26th council meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. All right, for reception and delegations, tonight we have with us the uh, Swan Valley School Division trustees and, and, and others with them as well. So we'll ask who's going to do the presentation, come forward and, and proceed. Welcome. Hi, welcome. Thank you, everybody, for the uh, opportunity to speak to you tonight. Um, as you all know, I'm Kelly Real. I'm a trustee with Swan Valley School Division. We have Donna Burkhart. Bill Schaefer, Tim Mendel, and Brent Roush with us as well. Okay, welcome. And I'm going to turn the floor over to Donna to start our presentation this evening. Bear with me because I'm not a lovely public speaker, but the challenge we have to do something out of our comfort zone, so this is my challenge. Uh, no problem. <laughs> You'll be fine. Yeah, okay. So tonight we're here to like just give you a little insight on how you can help to shape our education system. Uh, the province has put together a commission to do an education review, and the commission will focus on a long-term vision, how rapidly the world's changing, kindergarten grade 12, student learning, teaching, accountability for student learning, governance, and funding. So what we do know about the review is that there's nine members of the commission that have been announced. Co-chairs are Dr. Janice McKinnon and Clayton Manis. McKinnon is known for balancing the Saskatchewan budget as finance minister with major spending cuts and tax, tax hikes in the mid-1990s. Manis is known for cutting school funding as education minister in Manitoba in the 90s, <coughs> as well as being very upset and vocal that, not, that more school divisions were not eliminated in the last round of amalgamations. Uh, there is potentially now nine regional public meetings, which will be Winnipeg, Brandon, Steinbeck, Thompson, the Pot, and Dauphin. We did try to get them to come here, but there was no budge in that way. To speak at one of these meetings, you have to apply, and then the commissioners will handpick who is able to speak. Uh, dates and times will be announced in early April. So in addition to the nine public meetings, two roundtable discussions are going to happen. Most likely in Brandon and Winnipeg. Uh, the commission will handpick attendees from a list that MLAs were asked to provide. MLA Wojcik was kind enough to consult our division and uh, we assisted him in making the list that we submitted from here. We uh, gave in over a dozen names and so no further details are known right now, but we're hoping that some of those people get picked to go to these round tables. Uh, the Board of Trustees met on March 14th with uh, MLA Wojcik as well as MLA Ian Wishart to discuss the review and concern of our board has. The highlights of the meeting that we were quickly reminded to be prepared for great change. Uh, he, he had reminded Kelly that he told her this two years ago, so we are to be prepared for change. He asked us to encourage the communities to get involved and submit their thoughts. Uh, that's why we're here to start with. We're reaching out to all the municipalities and uh, towns to get on board with us. There's going to be online surveys, and we're going to be doing other things around town, too. Uh, on Saturday, March 16th, there was an announcement made that Dr. <coughs> Avis Glaze had been hired by the commission to be the lead consultant. This is another key turning point because she is well known for the Nova Scotian Department of Education, which saw the elimination of local elected school boards. And there's many changes there that are not favorable for students. So I'm going to let Kelly take it from here. Okay, so 
I am hoping that you have all seen this lovely document that was in the Star and Times edition. Uh, that was produced with our help, with help from the Star and Times, which we are eternally grateful for. Um, it, the review was promised when the new Conservative government came into power. And it was supposed to have started right after the new year, and it was delayed, and it just keeps getting delayed. And we were anticipating an announcement of regional meeting dates sometime this week. Um, this is a very important juncture in the field of education in the whole province, and in particularly our division. Because one of the hot topics right now is amalgamation. Amalgamation and the loss of local authority, potentially losing your, lo your local school board. Uh, Minister Gertzen has made it very clear that he's eyeing up a more regional model. In past discussions with MLA Wishart, he, he did say that when this review would be happening, and amalgamation talks would be on the table, he did tell me on several occasions that exceptions can be made. So we are hoping to be one of those exceptions. It's no different than back in the 90s when the Nori report was done and all of the, uh, the mass amalgamations were done at that time. Swan Valley School Division was spared then because it was seen as an exception. Partially because of our, well mostly I guess because of our geography. When you look north of us, the closest thing we have is Kelsey. To the east is Mountain View, Dauphin, and then to the south it's Park West. And then of course we are hampered by our Saskatchewan border. So we have nowhere to go to the west. Yes, thank you. I always get my directions screwed up. So the two hot topics, <coughs> amalgamation, uh, really in the end it's going to come down to what our communities value. And I could read off from our PowerPoint that we have prepared, but um, I was just before I came here, I was reading an article that the RM of Grasslands had put in the Brandon Sun, advocating for the local <coughs> school board to stay, because they too had gone through massive amalgamations in the 90s, and they discovered that there was no money that was saved down there when all of the school divisions amalgamated. So it comes down to what does your community value? So in our community, it's no secret that SVRSS is it's a showpiece. This is one of the highlights of our valley. This is one of the best high schools in the province, bar none. We value that. Because of what we have at SVRSS, we've been able to have such a successful partnership with UCN. Look what UCN is bringing into town. What happens if we lose that? By amalgamating, going bigger, we will be losing our local control. The department's made it clear to us that for a high school our size, we should have four, perhaps five max, voc ed programs. We have 13. If we're amalgamating with, say, Mountain View, how can we be certain that we can maintain that? There is no certainty. It's most unlikely that we would be able to, to maintain that. Put that together with the loss of local authority, if we do not have the local people making the local decisions to maintain those programs, they will be gone. The money's gonna be going to where the bigger centers are. Taxation is another huge issue. Now, I know AMM was really hoping that property taxes would be part of the review. That is not the case at all. The taxation issue is not gonna be part of the, dis the discussions whatsoever. So what we have been told is that when this part of the review is over, there's going to be a separate group tasked to discover, to kind of think about how it's going to be paid for. So phase one is what do we want, phase two is how do we pay for it. People think that if the property tax is removed, they are not going to have to pay school taxes, which is completely incorrect. You, as a municipality, when you're collecting it, you're writing the check to the Swan Valley School Division. One way or another, it's still gonna have to be collected. Education still has to be paid for. If it's not done on a property tax, 
Is it a 2-3% PSD height? Is it a flat fee on every body? We don't know. But instead of collecting it and writing the check to SVSD, you're going to be writing that check to the Minister of Finance. Those local dollars will not stay local. So what we're asking of all of the municipalities and all of our communities is to A, when it's announced, apply to present. Our local meeting is going to be in Dauphin. That's the closest we're going to have. We're going to have Dauphin and the Paw. We don't know what dates or times that's going to be yet, but we would ask that you just merely apply to present. These meetings are supposed to be two hours long with a 10 minute presentation if you were chosen and then five minutes from the commission to ask questions of you. There's that. We are also asking that you write a letter in support of the school division and maintaining what we have to not only the commission, but copy it to MLA Wolchuk, even Minister Friesen, Finance Minister, and myself, just so we have some some ability to, to gauge who has been part participating in the review. And the third thing I'm really begging people to do is spread the word. There really hasn't been a lot of details announced as of yet. Um, just through the grapevine, different school boards talking, we've, we've heard that the Thompson Regional Meeting will be on April 18th, so it's coming up, they're gonna be coming up fairly quick. I have a feeling once it's announced, it's gonna be boom happening very quickly. This is not gonna be the same kind of a process as the electoral boundary revision hearing, where the report came out and then you had a chance to comment back on it, and then the final report came out and it was done. This is, they want to hear as many opinions as they possibly can, formulate a report, boom, done, recommendations to be implemented. Now I know Bill is sitting here, and I know Bill has something to say. Do you have something to add? <coughs> well, the only, the only thing that I would add is, there is, there is histories on our side here in terms of what can happen. Back in 95, commissioners, commissioner, uh, in a conversation with, that I had with them said, not only did they recognize, and if, if you, the Nori report recommended 22 school divisions, we would have been, we were the only rural school division in the province that virtually left alone. We would have been the smallest division in the province because they based their report on having <coughs> student populations of four or 5,000. We would have been 2,200. And he said to me, he said, as Kelly has indicated, we could see that you're pretty unique here in terms of being, it's, it's, another way of putting it is, is that we don't know what the hell we do with you. Where, where do we put you? Well, because we are really separate. But the other thing that really impressed them, and this is where I think you people can come in, people of the community can come in, is that there were two or three presentations <coughs> made at that time. They actually came to this community in Oregon, and the reporting was done here. And all those presentations, one of them was from the chamber. I remember the chamber of was the teacher society, and there was another one that I don't recall right now who it was. But they all had the same message. They liked this. They liked to have a local presence. And he, he told me that that kind of impressed them. I don't know whether they heard that anywhere else, but that united kind of voice. And I guess that leads me to believe that there is there's an opportunity here to influence. If you believe and want to have local voice for local choice, and I think this council in particular, uh, you can have some impact. It's the best we can do. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks, Bill. No, Bill's absolutely right on that. Uh, this is similar to the electoral boundary hearings. Numbers matter. And it also depends on who is speaking. So that's why I'm asking you, being the biggest municipality uh, in our division, to not only apply to present, but to write a letter as well. Because by far, you will have the most influence. Do you have any questions for us while we're here? Any questions? Also, like I'll just preface that 
personally, I support the concept 100%. I think it's why wouldn't we want that I, for, for our valley, for our community, and, and I just look at our school division. I guess I'm prejudiced, but uh, like the trades building and the UCN relationships, and uh, specifically to healthcare, all the that tie in so well. So I personally, on my own, can do whatever I can. I counsel will decide the rest. Of it. Did you did you leave out Minister Gertson on your list of people we should play? Yes, and that's intentional because Minister Gertson is to be separate from the commission. Really? Why is that? That is just how it was chosen when they did the cabinet shuffle, yeah. and Wisher was made the uh, the head of the commission. Yeah. Uh, that was the deal that was made. This this is Mr. Wishart's baby, and Minister Gertson is to be off to the side. Okay, we can handle that. Uh, so certainly, I'm outside. Minister Wishart is the key guy because I like to believe he is in charge of this this redistribution. So I appreciate that, and I appreciate your optimism. I encourage you to stay positive in news releases and letters to the editors mm -hmm. and papers because some of those men and women there, regardless of party, get their backs up really quick when one is aggressive. And you know me, I've been chastised a few times for my aggressiveness, so I'm slowly learning. But the electoral boundaries uh, worked. Yeah. I think a, a bunch of us went down there and they listened, and I think yeah. they will listen because they're no different than a bunch of us in this room. So uh, I would encourage uh, whatever our committee decides that we'll go down there, hopefully somebody from the committee will. Thank you. Anybody else? I guess I just wanted to thank you for, for bringing this to the forefront because you're right, if, if, you, if there's nobody driving this, it's probably going to get left on the counter at the post office, so to speak. So thank you for driving this because this is important to our community and, uh, and hopefully we can uh, back you in any way we can. Councillor Gray, do you have anything? Do you have anything to say, Councillor Gray? Oh, 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 he's muted. He's muted. <laughs> this is the bad deal. <laughs> Sorry, I muted myself. I didn't want to turn on the phone, but he no, I have nothing. Yeah, thank, right. you. thank you. Thank you for the presentation. So, uh, yeah, thank you, and like Councillor DeLore said, thank you for bringing it up and, and making it more vocal and, and for even for everybody in the community and the whole Swan River Valley. It's important for all the parents and people that are involved with the school, no matter what, kids or not, they need to be informed and so that this goes down the right road. I know that we did, um, at the spring convention, a few of us attended, they did talk about taxation a little bit, and that I guess you're saying a second wave of, yeah. of the whole thing, and uh, we did ask to make sure that we'd be ready to do a submission to that as well. So, you know, council had kind of briefly talked about this, but it would be something that we will all be having a chat and, and coming up, you know, with a game plan and maybe maybe involving you guys to sit with us and talk about it a little bit more. <coughs> Absolutely. Well, that was going to be my question. Would it be beneficial to have a, a working group, so to speak, like we did for the uh, Boundaries Commission, so we get our talking points, you know, driving between other municipalities, or is or is there certain points that you want our our letters and our, our presentations to uh, expand expound upon, or or what is the best way to proceed to make sure that we're we're using our, if we do get a chance to speak or if we do get our, our letter listened to to make sure it's saying what, what, what we need to say to make sure it makes a difference. That's a good question. Um, we are going to every municipality. So we were hoping really to get numbers. Uh, I know the valley-wide G5 submission did work for the electoral boundary hearing. I don't know if that would work in this case. Uh, the talking points are no to amalgamation and save local decision making, local autonomy. Those are the two big ones. Talking about how unique we are, because yeah. it, is, it is phenomenal. When you talk to parents and students from other divisions, they don't have nothing compared to what we have here. And being such a small community that can provide so much, that's pretty unique in itself. But we work hard to. Absolutely. All right, great. Well, thank you very much for coming out. If that's everything, that's everything. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that.
Who wears your, your jerseys? You can just leave at the chairs. Thank place. you, Mr. Mayor. I know, I know <laughs> that you probably really want to keep them. You try. <laughs> I want to know how. How do we apply? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so moving on uh, to uh, communications. Six point one, the Traffic and Transportation Modernization Act. We knew that that was coming along. I don't know if Mr. Poole, do you have anything to add about that at all? We know about the, uh, the change there as far as speed speed zones and all that that we can uh, take care of in our municipality moving forward. But we will have to produce our own uh, bylaw by September. Yep. And uh, and move forward. Yeah, that'll that'll be in the works. We'll. We'll try and present the bylaw earlier in the summer so council has some ample time to take it. That's about it. Okay, so moving on 6.2, elected officials and the CAO fire protection workshop. Uh, Mr. Paul, we have something to yeah, say that uh, Chief Fedorchuk want to add that to the agenda? Uh, yeah, it's basically just a conference for, for CAOs and, and elected officials to go through some of the things firefighters go through and and uh, get to see their side of the world. <clears throat> and I know that we did talk about uh, a little bit about uh, budget and how much money we're going to be budgeting for for workshops and all that in the in the in the new year of 2019. So we'll have to be thinking about that as well. Yeah, and if we decide, uh, if anyone's deciding to put forth a resolution, our CFO is. Uh, I guess cautioning us on the amount of conferences that we go to throughout 2019. All right. Councilor Gray, you're following all right there? I, I can't hear a single word. Okay. Did you not just answer the question? I can't hear him, maybe. Is it because you got some feedback there, or do you want me to talk louder? Well, we, we need some form of microphone or something. This is five months. Okay, I'll just talk a little bit louder here then. Uh, 7.1, we have the Superintendent of Works report. So any questions to Mr. Poole? Councillor Gray? Nothing. Councillor Delorier. I guess just want to make a comment to uh, Mr. Poole uh, on uh, acknowledging how early his crews have gotten out to clean the streets and clean up the winter grime. This is, I think, the earliest I've ever seen, and uh, they're doing a good job. I'll pass the message along. Councillor Friesen. I was echoing Councillor Dory about the pothole patching. It's uh, great. Pass along. <sighs> Councillor Wintoni. What, what is prepared grass cutting letters? What is that about? Uh, the town has several properties, private properties that we cut. Uh, we, uh, we send a letter just explaining the rates and that's basically it. It's just a heads up. If you don't want to do it, we will. They know that we will, they can't let it go. So uh, we send a letter to all the properties that usually have us cut it and just make them aware of the rates for 2019. Sorry, right. can I have one, one more question? Yeah. Um, just in regards to grass cutting, how who looks at? We obviously cut the grass on Highway 10 and 83 going out of the. And this might be off topic a little bit, but um, we cut it. Do we get any reimbursement from highways for cutting that grass to 10, um, 10, and then 83 bypass and 83 going out of town? Uh, we we usually get. Uh, they, they don't charge us for, for a cold mix oil that we use from them for fixing pothole. It's kind of a service swap. Okay. <clears throat> Councilor Delorier. Are we still on track for the end of May for the new recycling service provider? Yes. All right, resolved that the Superintendent of Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 
<coughs> okay, reports. CEO reports and council. So, Councillor White. It's a short one. Last week. Uh, just a handful of local issues relative to recycling. I want to compliment uh, yourself, Your Worship, and um, Councillor Jacobson and Councillor uh, Delore for helping me uh, answer those questions. I really want to compliment uh, Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Mintoni because uh, you've chosen a path which I agree with relative to the headhunters looking for uh, a new CAO. And I know some of us were hesitant to follow that path initially. But because you did your homework, sir, and you convinced us, which I think was appropriate, it's, it's nice to have new ideas which you bring to the table. It's appreciated. Uh, do we have a hot tub fix date? I've been asked that so often lately, and I don't know the answer. No date to date. And uh, Mr. Poole, any, any replies relative to the letters to the other CAOs relative to the uh, CT scan and sending a letter? Nothing from those rascals? I haven't gotten any other. Okay, thank you. And at the risk of being fined, uh, a big community event coming up April 27th, the Swan Valley Sport Fish Dinner, which they'll put $20,000 back into our valley community. It will be at the Curly Rink because we're, we know the Stampeders will still be playing, which is fantastic. But there'll be less room, so there'll be less tickets. So I'll let you know ahead of time because we sell it every year. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Delorier. Uh, since our meeting last Tuesday, I had a rec meeting tonight, uh, but I'll let Councillor Gray speak on that as he's chair. And then we had a uh, governance committee meeting to deal with uh, CAO hiring tonight, and we'll fill the rest of you in in camera on that since it's a personnel issue. Okay. Councillor Wintoni. Um, not a whole lot to report, just a couple of questions. One more to Mr. Poole in regards to um, communications and, and the discussion with Swan Meadows and that dumpster situation. Just wanting to make sure that that was um, there was uh, formal communication that was brought to attention of council. And make just want to make sure that all of council gets to see that at some point. I think unless yep. it's already dealt with, I'm not sure. No, it actually it was it actually wasn't the backing that was the issue. It was just the placement of the dumpster and how they're pushing it back. They nicked the very corner of that building. So we are looking at putting in a bollard because we can tell them not to do it, but with the way the dumpster goes and where they have to push it out to get it to actually lift, pushing it back in, those wheels, those caster wheels, and that heavy dumpster is hard to, to force. So we're going to be installing a bollard there to stop the dumpster from hitting the building. So it was not the angle iron. Oh, okay. It was in the end. So in the end, we will be the town will be looking after rectifying that situation and it'll be our our expense <coughs> for that. Yes. Okay. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to remind your worship in regards to a letter, a support letter to settlement services in regards to just supporting them and, and um, um, continuing to have the support of settlement services. Other than that, it was a uh, recreation meeting tonight. Um, and my week was pretty, pretty meeting free. So that's all I have to share. Okay, Councilor Morio. Uh, this week has been uh, pretty uh, light since we met last week, but uh, last Thursday and Friday, uh, the government governance committee will continue on with our CEO search. Um, we'll discuss that in, in camera as uh, uh, Councilor Gloria had mentioned. I uh, also want to extend my congratulations to our local Swan Valley Stampeders for getting into the finals for the uh, MJHL, um, which is the first time in, I guess, their league history that they've accomplished that. So congratulations to them for accomplishing that, and good luck in uh, going forward. Um, also, just want to put out a message out there that uh, today is National uh, Autism Awareness Day, along with National Autism Awareness Month. So. It's very dear to my heart, so it's uh, just putting that out there for people to recognize and support these uh, special uh, individuals. Okay, thank you, Councillor Morio. <coughs> Councillor Friesen. Uh, just to thank you, the dumpster that uh, was in the middle of the lane has now been put back on its pad. Thank you to the boys that did that. Uh, the 55 plus games uh, plans are. Sorry, there's... Ongoing. Somebody like that? Go ahead. Um, 
Yes, the plans are ongoing. Uh, we're just getting everything set for opening ceremonies in June. Uh, Settlement Services received a letter from the United you know, Church supporting them um, to keep on. And I would just like to mention that this Saturday is one year since Humboldt's terrible bus crash. So let's all take a moment to think about those families that are left. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Friesen. Councillor Dory had one other thing to add. Yeah, I had one other question in regards to the comments that uh, Councillor Wintoni made. Um, Mr. Poole, what is our policy on, on bollards? Like the, the, uh, the user has to pay for the dumpster, they have to pay for the pad. Why, why, why does the town pay for the bollards? Uh, I understand we, we should pay for any damage we cause, but I mean it should be up to the, the user to, to, protect to, to, to provide the facility for the, for the dumpster. I guess the argument being is we're the, ones, we're the ones moving the dumpster, causing the damage. We're in complete control of, of everything that's going wrong there. Right? So mm -hmm. yes, it would be an incentive for them to put the, the bollard there. Uh, to protect their property, but we are the ones who are in there once a week or twice a week to, to do that. that. We don't have a policy on bollards protecting uh, uh, buildings. It's just something myself and, and Darren came up with saying, let's get it up, it won't happen again. I, I guess, in my mind, it's this, the bollard saves, serves the same purposes as, as the angle iron, which the, which the uh, user has to pay for. So I guess we probably need a policy for one thing. Um, and I guess, is this, well, for lack of a policy, is this decision consistent with other places where we've put bollards in? Uh, we don't have a lot of bollards out there, so okay. so this this would be, I'm, I'm guessing the reaction from the homeowner would be, so you're, you know, so you're forcing me to pay for your guys smashing our property. You know? Well, I, I, we should fix their property if we wreck it, but if, I mean, in my mind, the bullard is part of the facility needed for the dumpster, and the rest of the facility is I paid for by the by the user. I, I guess what I, I'm I going is we probably just need a policy on this. I'm, I, yeah. If that's the decision, I'm not going to suggest we return your decision, but we, we should probably look at a policy on this for the future. We can definitely look at a wording of a policy upgrade of the garbage in the garbage pile. And we, we may want to... Oh, no, no, never mind. I just uh, missed, I, I brought a, a sheet from White House for a week or two ago. It's called City News Highlights, and they put this in the, in the restaurants, they put it in the stores. And this is an update what's happening in, in the city of Whitehorse, next council meeting, property taxes, blah, blah. And I think it's a pretty inexpensive way to increase our communication with our general public so they know what we're doing, when we're doing, how we're doing it. One more inexpensive method to communicate. So I'd ask council to have a look at that. And uh, if we decide to go that way, I'm sure that would uh, make our constituents a little happier. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Gray. Uh, I, I don't know if you can hear me. We can hear you. You can give a well. sign saying you can hear me. That would be helpful. Okay, good. Because I can't hear virtually anything that you guys are saying. We need to get some microphones or something because the microphones on laptop computers are notably unidirectional and um, standards. So what do I hear is garble. Um, secondly, I, I'm going to confirm what others have said. We have a we've had several governance committee meetings. We, we're in the process of reviewing the CAOs. We use the template we had before. Um, I think it went pretty well. We've got two possible candidates, I suppose. I think we'll discuss that in due course. Uh, I assume, Mr. Mayor, you're going to cover that in your report. Um, I think Mr. Poole has asked that we have the Min arm of Minnetonis wants an intergovernmental services committee uh, me or uh, interagency meeting. We probably should do that with all of, with at least them and the arm and the Swan River together. Um, I, I assume that's our committee that's going to do that, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Yes, okay. And the same with Indigenous relations. I don't know if we have um, had any contact. I'm going to contact Chief Janine next, well, when we get back next week. So um, one of us needs something up for a bilateral meeting. 
Is that going to be you or me? That I actually, I'm meeting with Chief Janai on Sunday, and we'll have a discussion about that at that time. We lost I didn't hear. I didn't hear a word you said. Sorry, I'm, I'm can, meeting. Can up, someone, I'm meeting up with you. The, the computer. Uh oh. Your phone. Well, there you go. Uh, okay. okay. He's gonna meet with him on Sunday. Good. Perfect. And are you gonna set up a meeting with all of us or just you? Well, him and I are actually just uh, getting together, uh, and then we're gonna set up a meeting for all of us. Okay. Great. Commit to uh, issue um, my call. We're, we're, we're not getting you at all, Councillor Gray. Maybe we'll, uh, probably will remember. We have an alternate process for the ice surface that is being explored. It will cost us four to $5,000 to have them come up and do a feasibility study. We, the Recreation Committee is recommending that we consider uh, the expenditure of the necessary resources to have that feasibility study done. If we can, then it will be a substantial speed. We, at the same time, are looking at an alternate reporting the surface um, that would be even cheaper. Um, we have a better report for you next time. But in the meantime, we need approval to have administration contract with, um, and uh, Mr. Poole, if you can give the name of the company for a feasibility study, that would be appreciated. That would be, that's, our, that's my motion. Are you wanting to bring forth that resolution tonight? Well, I think we have to so that they're authorized to spend the money. Okay, fair enough. So do you want to deal with that motion, that resolution now, or do you want to deal with the, my second point? Uh, we'll we'll uh, do it in uh, like a little bit later on. Mr. Poole, add the resolution to the agenda, and then when we get down to it, we'll vote on okay. it. Well, we just discussed it this evening, so. The second is that our pool rates, uh, we're, I'm moving to uh, reconsider those rates. I think we're to reduce what we were going to charge pool pigeon. Or we're going to recommend that to council in any event, but we won't have the vote on that until after our public meeting, which is April 23rd. Is that right, gentlemen? Yeah. Or April 24th. One of the two, I can't remember. April, April 24th. Oh, that resolution, I know it's that we are going to be discussing it at a future um, council meeting of a suggest the first council meeting in May. I think it's. Sounds good. Hello? Yeah. You're looking at, you're looking at puzzled, Mr. Mayor. Well, because uh, we sometimes only hear about every second or third word because the internet is a little glitchy. So. You often sound like a robot as well, so it's uh, not easy to. Oh no! Them. And it's not the okay. not the fault of uh, of, of this. I think it's the internet that is giving us some grief here. Okay, I don't know what's happening. All I know is it's bad on both ends. So, uh, both Council De Councilor Deloria and Councilor Wintoni have those two resolutions, so uh, they can go with they they can introduce them equally to me. Did we found out what the agenda is for the MKO meetings? We have not, or at least I have not seen anything. Have you seen Mr. anything? Because we don't throw people to go of the... We have not heard. Mr. Poole indicates okay. we have not heard. I've got no email, no. Okay. Mr. Mayor, with permission, I'm going to leave because it's not helpful for me or for one or five you. <laughs> okay. Pardon? I'm so I'm so sorry. So I'm going to sign off if that's if that's acceptable, Mr. Mayor. It is. Thank you. Have a good evening. Good night. Bye.
All right. <clears throat> Moving on. Um, oh, I guess me. Um, yeah, so last week we did conduct some uh, uh, interviews for potential CEOs, and uh, unfortunately I missed a couple of them, but I did catch, I think, the two strongest ones at the very end. So I think that we will uh, uh, move on and, and see where we'll go with those and once we have some of the other stuff done as far as background checks and stuff like that. Um, the other thing that I was going to talk about was, uh, well, I was going to talk about, I lost my train of thought here. Where did they go? Uh, anyway, uh, Carl Samorio said, you know, it was great. Stan Peters did an outstanding job in the second round of the playoffs and beating Steinbach in good old fashion. And uh, we'll see them here this Sunday, I guess it is, for their for game two. And hopefully we can see lots of people in that arena and tickets fill it up and take them to the tickets the are on sale this afternoon. afternoon. So good. So, uh, no, best of luck to our Stan Peters. And here we are supporting them tonight in, in, in good old fashion. So. Um, I'll be actually going down and meeting with the Stamp Peters tomorrow afternoon to give them some words of encouragement from the community and from council. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. So, uh, Mr. Poole, I'll take your report now. <coughs> uh, just to go through departments, I've been assisting the managers, uh, specifically recreation with the with the rink and the options for it for the for the committee that, uh, meeting that was held today. Uh, also with the pool hours and some just some operational issues that uh, the manager is having with uh, Public Works. Uh, Darren's starting on the well site next week, so the contractor is biting at the at the bit to to get started. He's also dealing with OSS and their advertisement plan and uh, making sure that we get ours linked with theirs when it does go out. Uh, trying to keep that on the, on the forefront. And the garbage truck proposals came in today, but uh, we did allow a four-day extension as a request of two of the uh, suppliers, so we won't see those till the 16th. Uh, and then also other operational tenders, the, the oil, uh, the paint, <coughs> uh, tenders are all getting looked at and sent out to local suppliers. And just to update uh, council, uh, several tickets went out on 11th Avenue South today. I know that was a, an issue. So we were looking at 10th was the pictures that I had received. So miscommunication on the, on the street. Uh, as for myself, the, the new clerk is settling in. Uh, good job shadowing going on. She's learning lots, but she's doing well. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time with the CFO on the budget. Uh, hopefully next Thursday. We can talk about this after the meeting and with council schedule, but late next week or early the week after would be preferred for our first, uh, or I should call it second uh, real budget meeting. And I uh, just have an office staff meeting tomorrow morning. Uh, with all the staff just to discuss operations, changes that are happening, updates, things like that, just keeping everybody on track. <clears throat> That's it? That's it. Okay. Uh, glad to hear that you have the administration uh, meetings after council. I don't know if you do that all the time, but just to keep them up to date, I think that's very good. Okay, moving on. Resolved that the minutes from the March 26, 2019 Recreation Committee meeting will be received and moved by Councillor Tony, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Anything from the committee to discuss on that, or is it all just Councillor Delorier? I guess, I guess just to recap what Councillor Gray was saying, because it was a little bit uh, muffled, we're looking at a uh, contractor or, or a uh, a outfit that would come in and place a temporary surface, surface in the arena it would involve jacking up the boards to the new height this would just be a temporary measure it, but what it would buy us is for sure one year a few years uh, probably as many years as we wanted to have a discussion over how much of a, of a rehabilitation we do to the arena yeah, I, there are some people not me but some people out there that are saying build a new arena um, so it would allow time for that discussion so we wouldn't have to make a decision 
with a gun pointed to our head, so to speak. So, so that's one option we're looking at. This will involve an outfit coming out from, from we were looking at a couple, uh, supply from Ontario, Quebec, the outfit from Quebec is one that thinks that they can do it. So they, there's a resolution <coughs> coming tonight to authorize uh, them coming out. I think it's about $4,000 to see if it's going to for sure be feasible. They need to actually see the, see the facility. Um, so that is, that is uh, coming down the pipe from that rec meeting. And Councilman Tony. The other one that um, I think that will be a resolution coming forward to is to rescind the uh, decision, Council's decision on the pool rates in regards to the increase to the school division. So we will be seeing that resolution coming this evening. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. New business. <clears throat> Resolve that the request of $75 towards fire inspection from the Hayes Child Care Center be approved. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Guintoni. Discussion. Councillor Gloria. What's been our policy in the past on, uh, on we, we don't do this for other child care places, do we? No. No, and the reason I know that other donations previously this year have been referred to a uh, committee on what department they were kind of geared to, but uh, these ones, these ones are pretty standard. Every private business would have to pay for the same inspection if it's required. Okay. Council Morio. So there's the, those. That, there's a very finite number of ones that we traditionally prepare grants for for these. In the last year, we did some for the next group, I believe. That we authorized. I would, I would, I don't know that. I would have to look back and. Yeah, I don't know the, the history as far as I know that we, it was just straight zero donations. Whether we've given them or not, I don't have that information. <coughs> Further discussion. All in favor. In light of Councillor Moore's comment that we may have done this in the past, should we uh, refer to committee till we can look that up, or if somebody wants to look up quickly in the minutes from last year, that maybe that we should uh, either defer to. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to the defer. Productive Services Committee. Yeah, I'm willing to defer that motion to. To the committee. To the committee to bring up that okay. next meeting after we get the. Eight point one and eight point two. That would be. Well, 8.2 has been brought to the table yet, but uh, um, definitely 8.1 can definitely go um, since it's on the table to get the facts behind uh, as to what we traditionally done last year with. Okay, <coughs> and the mover and the seconder agree? Yeah, that's Okay, so then that's what we'll do. So this will go to the Protective Services Committee? Yes. He's on it. Okay. You're, the, you're, the, you're the chair. I just delegated. <laughs> Okay, so resolved that the request for $300 for a fire inspection from the Association of Community Living be approved. Moved by Councillor. I think we can table that one also. Motion to uh, table to committee. Okay, so there's been a motion to send it to the committee. Should we go on that? Sure. All in favor? Uh, moving on, the uh, result of the Swan Valley Settlement and Immigration Services Incorporated financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2018 be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Eight point four. They, we have the uh, item there about the uh, insurance policy for a council to uh, review. Is there any discussion on that at all? I know it was it was mentioned during one of the councilors' reports at the last meeting. So I, I, it's not a bad thing for council to review our policy. I just put it on the agenda, uh, no resolution, just for information. <coughs> So this is like all the list that we have on the insurance policy. 
basically what yeah. it is. Yeah. All right. Result of the town of Swan River authorized Blaine Healy to hunt and destroy crows within the town of Swan River as a deterrent of West Nile virus and will be re reimbursed as per the attached terms listed in Schedule A. Moved by Councillor uh, Wintoni, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor White and uh, Delorier and Morio. Uh, how many crows does he shoot a year? I know it's, it's not a lot. Uh, well, I can't uh, yeah. to recall. No, it's more like 40. 40 crows here? <sighs> Councillor Delorier. I was going to ask one of you as well. Okay, Councillor Morio. Um, we passed a similar resolution to this, I believe it was last fall. Um, Pardon me? I, so we passed a, a, same, a similar resolution to this last fall. Um, and, do we have, like, and, and there's no end date on here, so I was just wondering like, if there was no end date last year, why does it have to come back? Uh, I believe he requires the resolution from council in order to get permission from the RCMP to do this. So, so maybe if I can put, maybe amend it, the resolution to say for the 2019 calendar year or fiscal year or <coughs> something like that. Okay. So, I'm that's just to, a suggestion. I, I, uh, I think it's a good idea. <coughs> I just philosophically have a little bit, unless we have a problem with crows, and I'm not sure we do or don't, I don't honestly know. Mm -hmm. We go out and we shoot 400, 100 crows? 40. Mm -hmm. I think 40 is a high number. I think it's been 40 is a high number. I think it's been down since okay. since we covered the garbage. Yeah. The girls are pretty important part of the ecosystem. There for a reason, you know. So all wildlife has a reason for being here. They, they also carry a deadly disease. Has anybody got the West Nile virus in Manitoba in the last five years? Uh, yeah. yeah, two people. Yeah. Two people. Councilor Friesen. He can't go willy nilly shooting crows. He's got to be asked to come into somebody's yard. To do it, okay, and that way, okay, he gets permission. That thing flies next door. He can't do it unless he has next door's permission. So it's not just a let's go and shoot crows. It's you know it's planned, it's organized. I'm sure I was the same with you. I thought he's just going to go and start shooting crows. Well, you can't. It's organized. I'm, I'm not sure the West Nile no, virus no. issue is. Uh, this is a real one, and I'm not sure there's not. Before you close all the way to the All in favor? I can, I can, okay. uh, you can amend that resolution before you go on. Oh, right, I'm sorry. You just to, uh, uh, these, uh, I'm just going to make an amendment here that will be on the condition that, uh, just for wherever, I don't know. That it ends December 31st, 2019? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's going to be in Schedule A. Right. There's a reason. Should be right there. There, if you refresh, I'll refresh. Result, the town of Swan River authorized Blaine Healy to hunt and destroy crows within the town of Swan River as a deterrent of West Nile virus and to be reimbursed as per the attached terms listed in Schedule A on the condition that the agreement end December 31st, 2019. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Rentoni. Delorier, sorry, Delorier. Discussion? <coughs> All in favor? It's carried. Resolve that the town of Swan River engage. What's the organization's name? Uh, I have to run and grab it. Oh, okay. I think it's on that paper that David has in front of us. Center glass? Yeah, center glass. glass. Yeah. I'll just put that in. Did you say center glass? You can spell that if you want. S-Y-N-E-R 
G L A C E. <clears throat> Resolve the Town of Swan River engage Center Glass to assess the Centennial Arena and present to Council with recommendations. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Uh, the other company that we initially looked at, or committee yet looked at, there, that custom ice, I believe it is, they can't do it or. Uh, no, they, they had called back, and after looking at our, our facility, they determined there's not enough room for their setup to be to fit in our facility. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Councilor Delorier. Actually, on, the, on this past resolution, just one further point of clarification. Um, this is actual ice, not synthetic ice? This is actual ice. Okay, because I've been reading about synthetic ice that you plant with real skates, but it's not ice. But so this is actual ice, okay? Yeah, they use our plant. Okay. Yeah. They resolve that the accounts as follows by hereby approve the payment. General account checks number 24149 to number 24184 for a total of $50,190,021. Payroll account checks number 4431 to number 44, only less than missing a number, for a total of, I don't have any totals in here, 50,119.21. You mean in the resolution? Yeah. For payroll account checks. No, there is no payroll account oh, checks. We had a meeting oh. last week, and there's been no... Oh, okay, so we'll just uh, forget line two then. Okay. Moved by Councillor Pantoni, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Asking questions? Councillor Morio. Uh, check number 0024169 to LC contracting. Um, that amount is that from the 6th Avenue lift station or the uh, wellhead? No, that is our landfill contractor. Oh, okay. Oh, never mind. So I have. Councillor White. Oh, I have the same one. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. All right. Just that other resolution. We have a notice of motion. I'm just having trouble finding the resolution. If someone else can help, uh, the resolution passing the school division pool rates. Mm -hmm. I've used search, but uh, I'm having trouble finding. It. We will need the resolution number. <coughs> Should be from the March 26th meeting, I believe, or maybe. We could. Can I say we could pass a resolution with? I 
something filling them. I could fill it in. We did pass them, did we not? I don't recall it. Right, it's for pools. I honestly, I don't remember. It would have been a, I'm trying to find the fee schedule because it would be in the fee schedule. <clears throat> We could fill in the resolution number after if we have this word if you sorry. Should we take a recess? It's a good idea. Okay. Actually, we don't need to pass a resolution. All I need is a is a something in writing from a counselor saying that that resolution is gonna come back to the table and then That's right. it can come back to the table. Right. At the next meeting. Yes. Right. That's right. Perfect. Yes. So someone needs to just tell me. So Councilor Matoni. Mr. Poole, we will be re-looking at the resolution in regards to the pool rate increase from past that we want to bring forward to the next agenda. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. The first time we got to use the mode of motion. What on the second time? Okay, resolve that pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal uh, Council Goal into committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we're discussing uh, legal issue of pool personnel uh, that has to do with the CLRA and the union uh, meeting, a uh, matter of understanding. Um, moved by Councillor Morial, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? 